Hi guys, welcome to Twin Perspective. I'm Joe, and tonight I'm going to be breaking down my favorite year of film, 1991. I will say that this is, in my opinion, the greatest year of film. However, you know, that's all preference, and I'm sure plenty of movie buffs would tell me 91 isn't even close. But this year, 1991, offered up the strongest field, uh, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to the, the best 10 films of that year. So, uh, I have a top 10 list of every year, and, uh, this one had the strongest 10 films of any year that, that I've ever reviewed. So, I'll go ahead and just say it's my favorite year of film. And to get started describing it, we'll look at what the Academy Awards had for their top five. So, nominated that year were The Silence of the Lambs, JFK, Beauty and the Beast, The Prince of Tides, and Bugsy. Now, I agree with The Silence of the Lambs and JFK. So, let's look for a moment at the other three they had there, Beauty and the Beast, an animated film, great, probably one of the greatest animated films ever, I'm sure, and one of the only ones nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. You had Bugsy, directed by Barry Levinson, and a great solid cast, a cast that the Academy was kind of gaga for. And uh, The Prince of Tides, directed by Barbara Streisand and starring her along with Nick Nolte, who uh, was nominated for his lead role. And we'll look at some other uh, films that mainstream kind of uh, grooved on. Fried Green Tomatoes, that movie kind of got shunned at the Academy. Uh, Backdraft, Directed by Ron Howard. We had Rush, starring Jennifer Jason Lee and Jason Patrick or Jason Miller Jr. Regarding Henry, directed by Mike Nichols. That one was acclaimed. So was Grand Canyon by Lawrence Kasdan. For the Boys which was uh, awarded a Best Supporting or Best Lead Actress nom uh, nomination for uh, Bette Midler. Um, and also Boys in the Hood, which got a directorial nod at the Oscars for John Singleton. Now, those are all fine films. Um, but none of them made my top 10. I also would like to look at a few of the other films that are kind of cultish, but, you know, some people consider, you know, their favorites. And uh, that list is right here, including The Addams Family. There are those people. What about Bob, of course, with Bill Murray? Point Break, which... So many people are gaga over. My Girl, which every lady I've ever met loves and, you know, kind of heart-wrenching. And then uh, <laughs> City Slickers, great film. And in this year of 1991, with so many solid supporting actor performances, it's Jack Palance from City Slickers who took home the Academy Award. You've also got Hot Shots and Naked Gun Two and a Half, The Smell of Fear. For those of you who like that Zucker Abrams kind of comedy, you've also got one of Wes Craven's best films, The People Under the Stairs, and uh, a Tony Scott film, The Last Boy Scout, which my twin brother swears by 
especially that screenplay. Those are all some cultish kind of favorites. And now before my top 10, I'll focus on uh, three other films. Uh, La Femme Nikita, directed by Luc Besson. It fits into this 91 category here, and uh, it's a great film and a great lead by Anna Pavelard. <laughs> so, that could have easily been in my top 10. But it just gets eked out. And two other films who I consider uh, favorites of mine but that would never get recognized by the Academy. And I'll feature these two now, the first LA story. Now everybody that knows Steve Martin says, I love Steve Martin, I love all his movies. And then I say, well, have you ever seen LA story? And they're like, no. Well, Steve Martin wrote LA story and it is a fine film, it's a great comedy. It's, it was a classic from the first time I watched it. And it's a shame that not, not so many people have seen it, and they should. It also features Sarah Jessica Parker, and uh, it features Steve Martin's then wife, Victoria Tennant. And it also features Richard E. Grant. Now, Love Stories, great. Great use of music by Enya in it a couple of times. It's magical, it's romantic, and uh, kudos to Steve Martin for this one. And speaking of Richard E. Grant, he also was featured in this next film I will talk about, which is Hudson Hawk. Now, without a doubt, one of my favorite films of the year, and this is one of those films that I think you either love or you hate. Now, <laughs> it may have been nominated for some Razzies, uh, it's kind of the butt end of a joke for some people, but I think Hudson Hawk is a fabulous film. It's a great action comedy. It's strong lead of Bruce Willis and Danny Aiello in a great buddy role that is infamous. The fact that they sing the songs to Countdown Crimes is just great. The screenplay's great. Sandra uh, Bernard and, uh, of course, Richard E. Grant again, and Andy McDowell, who doesn't do a lot of comedy, but uh, she was perfectly awkward in this. I love Hudson Hawk. But it doesn't make my top ten, so here are the ten films which make 1991 uh, my favorite year of film and what I think is the greatest year of film. At number ten... I'm going to mention At Play in the Fields of the Lord, directed by Hector Davinko, and it's got a solid cast. Tom Berenger, Daryl Hannah, John Lithgow, Aidan Quinn, Kathy Bates, and I say Daryl Hannah, Tom Waits, great cast, great cinematography, great location, and a great story about a uh, you know, missionaries trying to spread religion to uh, tribes in the, the jungle that some uh, some are interested, some really aren't. And it really is a tale of uh, how different societies in this world live. And it's pretty powerful, especially Kathy Bates' performance. I think John Lithgow is sensational. I think Aidan Quinn, it's probably his best role ever. And uh, Tom Berenger is the lead, and he does great. At Play of the, in the Fields of the Lord. It's a hard movie to find. No one ever talks about it, but it is here at number 10 on my list. At number 9, from the great Ridley Scott, we have Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise was a bit of a darling for the Academy as well. I didn't mention it before. Um, didn't win anything. But uh, it is uh, considered one of Ridley Scott's best films. Gina Davis, uh, Susan Sarandon are phenomenal in it. And uh, probably best known as the first real major role for Brad Pitt. 
What you gonna do? People love it. The uh, ending's iconic. Uh, Susan Sarandon was actually criticized at the time because uh, she was portraying a woman who decided to get what she needed out of life through uh, mayhem and perhaps wielding a weapon. And I remember Susan Sarandon saying, well, how come uh, Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman can be revered as a strong woman getting what she wants by uh, <laughs> BJ's <laughs> was her uh, was her term. So kudos to Susan. Thelma and Louise at number nine. At number eight, James Cameron's phenomenal Terminator 2 Judgment Day. This was the epic at the theater at the time. I remember very vividly when this movie came out in 91 that uh, it had special effects, you know, unparalleled at, to, to that point in, in film. And uh, it was a solid sequel to a, a very, very fine film. <clears throat> I don't know what else to say about Terminator 2, except that a lot of people consider it better than the first, and uh, it should be considered one of the best sci-fi films of all time, especially with those groundbreaking special effects, Linda, Ham Linda Hamilton's excellent performance. Terminator 2 at number 8. Speaking of phenomenal performances, at number 7, uh, a movie that got really shunned by the Academy, Oliver Stone's The Doors. And this film is phenomenal from beginning to end, whether it's the writing, the music, the direction, the cinematography, the whole presentation is great. And the cast is phenomenal. The fact that they learned their musical instruments and played those songs on their own is to be commended Kudos especially to Kyle McLaughlin, who already knew all of the keyboard parts by the great Ray Manzarek and, and Val Kilmer, whose performance should have been, could have been, recognized by the Academy. Val Kilmer becomes Jim Morrison in that film, and it's a, a sight to behold, a memorable film. It sits here at number seven. My favorite films from 1991 at number six. Just missing out at number five. I'm going to settle at number six with Cape Fear by the great Martin Scorsese. Now, Scorsese has done some films I don't really care for, and they're highly, highly acclaimed. Scorsese's also done some films that most people just tend to forget about. After Hours is one of them. I think it's a great film. No one ever talks about it. I'll take that over Gangs of New York any day. Uh, the Last Temptation of Christ, which, you know, was so poorly received by the religious zealots upon its release that uh, the critics really didn't, I don't think they felt the freedom to express how great the film is and that incredible cast, including Willem Dafoe and Harvey Keitel and Harry Dean Stanton and David Bowie and the incredible Barbara Hershey. Incredible film with the greatest soundtrack ever. And uh, another one here by Scorsese, Cape Fear. Now, it's a remake. A lot of people want to say the original's better, and, you know, Robert Mitchum was in both of them. Uh, this movie has a great cast, including Nick Nolte, whose performance here could have been recognized. Um, Jessica Lang is phenomenal. You've got uh, Joe Don Baker, who's very good in it. Uh, Juliette Lewis, who was recognized by the Academy with a nomination. But it stars the great Robert De Niro, and in my opinion, it's his best role ever. And that's the reason why I think Cape Fear should be acknowledged more among Scorsese's best, because in my opinion, this is Robert De Niro's best performance. 
really carries the film even stronger than Scorsese's direction. So, not to mention Nick Nolte knocking it out of the park. Cape Fear at number six. Now we're getting to the top five. At number five, The Silence of the Lambs by Jonathan Demme. Great film, cannot be denied. It was one of only three films which swept the top awards at the Academy Awards. It won Best Picture, it won Best Director, it won Best Actor, Anthony Hopkins, it won Best Actress with Jodie Foster, and it won Best Screenplay. So, in this a strong year of film. It's really hard to imagine that a film could accomplish that feat, especially with Robert De Niro's performance in Cape Fear, which I did give a, a credit for best performance of the year. It was tied. I'll mention that. Um, but yet the Academy decided to give it to a horror movie slash drama thriller with The Silence of the Lambs, and I'm glad they did. And The Silence of the Lambs should be praised, but there are four films I found better. And at number four, I'm going with my favorite film by David Cronenberg, Naked Lunch, based on the novel by William S. Burroughs, who is portrayed very keenly by Peter Weller, the great Judy Davis playing his wife, and I thought her performance here should have won Best Actress. Uh, you've also got uh, some weird performance by Julian Sands and uh, um, Roy Scheider. Uh, the music is insane and great. And like I said, my favorite film by Cronenberg, Naked Lunch, never gets discussed. But it is part of why I think this film is so, this uh, year of film is so strong. Right above it at number three, a Coen Brother classic that no one ever talks about, that would be Barton Fink. Barton Fink is phenomenal and yet puts my brother to sleep and it is kind of slow. Um, I don't mind that and with this kind of a uh, a feeling that the film is trying to portray it's absolutely perfect so great job Cohen's especially with the writing the set design and the performances this movie features Judy Davis and another fantastic performance it also features Michael Lerner who was actually nominated for an Academy Award uh, it features uh, John Mahoney as the alcoholic writer uh, husband the Judy Davis and the top two performances by John Turturro and John Goodman. John Goodman knocks it out of the park every time. And this is one year when he could have been recognized. And of course, John Turturro, who's the lead as Barton Fink, uh, is very memorable. And I, I credit it as one of the best five performances of the year for sure. And this is one of the best Coen Brothers movies ever. Barton Fink is at number three. And my favorite two films from 91, the Academy did recognize at number two, JFK by Oliver Stone. The great Oliver Stone who gave us the doors this very year also gives us JFK, the greatest editing I've ever seen in a film, my favorite ever. Uh, Robert Richardson with the cinematography won the Academy Award there and uh, I gave him the nod for that as well and JFK has probably unquestionably one of the greatest cast of all time don't know if it's the greatest of all time but it's right up there uh, the film features Kevin Costner Sissy Spacek Tommy Lee Jones Joe Pesci Gary Oldman Kevin Bacon Jack Lemmon Walter Matthau, John Candy, Ed Asner, Vincent D'Offro, Sally Kirkland, Frank Wiley, Lolita Davidovich, Brian Dole Murray, Pruitt Taylor Vince, 
I mean, it goes on and on. John Larroquette, the uh, the actual DA from New Orleans who wrote the book that the film's based on, Jim Garrison, he played a, uh, a commissioned uh, Warren. And uh, not to mention the great Donald Sutherland, whose scene kind of just breaks it all down for you. It's just a phenomenal cast. And I'm not even mentioning the DA's office. Lori Metcalf, Michael Rooker, J.O. Saunders, Wayne Knight, Gary Grubbs. I mean, insane cast. And one of the greatest movies of all time. It ranks number seven on my list of favorite films of all time. But it doesn't win out best film for 1991 at number one, The Fisher King, of course, directed by Terry Gilliam, my favorite film he's ever done, <sighs> with, which, with a cast that could have swept this year. I did give the greatest movie of the year to The Fisher King. Um, for direction, I had to go with Oliver Stone for JFK, but Gilliam was right there. And for best actor, tied with Robert De Niro, from Cape Fear, I've got Robin Williams. Now, Robin Williams was nominated for his role in The Fisher King, and rightfully so. I also nominated Jeff Bridges, who is co-lead and carries the film very well when Robin's not stealing the show. But it doesn't end there with that brilliant cast that also stars Mercedes Rule, who won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, and, uh, and she should have, because it is phenomenal. And we also have Amanda Plummer. It's probably her best role, and she should have been acknowledged as well, I think. And the great and late but great Michael Jeter, whose performance is a miracle, and uh, the film should be watched for that alone. But Richard Lavengrazi, uh, uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name, wrote a fantastic screenplay. It's a beautiful story of redemption. There are characters that you're not sure of at first, and you watch them grow. And uh, one of the best endings ever in cinema. And a solid win. Best picture for me for 1991, The Fisher King. The Fisher King wasn't nominated by the Academy uh, for best film, but it was recognized for a screenplay nomination. Like I said, Mercedes Rule won. Robin Williams was nominated but lost. It was also nominated for art direction. Uh, kind of shocking. So there you go. My favorite year of film, 1991. These are the great films of that year that set it apart for me. These are the 10 films who I think from top to bottom are some of the best in uh, in our cinema history. So check out all of those and all of the ones I've mentioned in this video. You can also take a look in my playlist for uh, the best films of folder, Twin Perspective. There you will find my twin brother and I discussing the winners in the, every category for uh, these great films from 1991, as well as a few other years. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm Joe. This has been Twin Perspective. Please subscribe to Rosenfield 10 for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the trees. Bye.